one of the only man-made objects that is visible from outer space and the largest man-made excavation on Earth is Kennecott, Utah Copper's Bingham Canyon Mine. But more amazing than the tremendous size of the mine is the amount of copper it has produced. Since 1906, the Bingham Canyon Mine has produced over 17 and one half million tons of copper. Or as much copper as it would take to put new wiring in every home and apartment in Mexico, Canada, and the United States, and still have enough left over for every car in America. But copper is used in much more than wiring. Copper's resistance to corrosion makes it great for roofing and pipes. Its ability to conduct heat is why it's used in cookware and your car's radiator. Copper conducts electricity better than any other metal except silver. It's used to generate and carry electrical power. Almost everything that uses electricity has copper in it. That makes copper the basic building block of today's high technology. From its use in CAT scanners to automobiles to the space shuttle, copper is one of our most important natural resources. And it's one of the most recyclable metals on Earth, even more so than aluminum. The Bingham Canyon mine produces about 300,000 tons of copper a year, or 17% of the nation's total output. Because the United States manufactures so many goods, it has long been a major consumer of copper and other metals. In 1863, that demand for metals led Brigadier General Patrick Connor, commanding officer of Fort Douglas in Salt Lake City, to send troops to investigate stories about mineral deposits in Bingham Canyon. The stories panned out, and soon prospectors were finding lead, silver, and gold. They found copper, too. But the ore was of such a low grade, only 38 pounds per ton, that nobody could afford to mine it. However, it was believed that the mineral reserves were so tremendous that if it could be mined on a large scale, say 2,000 tons per day, a company could make a profit. The key was efficiency. Unfortunately, underground mining in those days was not efficient enough. Then, in 1903, a resourceful metallurgical engineer named Daniel Jackling formed the Utah Copper Company and came up with a plan to mine the ore from the surface, a plan which established techniques now known as open pit mining. Mining experts said it wouldn't work, but by 1910, the mines in Bingham Canyon and the ore processing mills at Magna and Arthur and the smelter at Garfield formed the largest industrial mining enterprise in the world. In the past 100 years, over 7 billion tons of material have been excavated from this mine. And even though the ore contains less than 1% copper, this mine produces about 900 tons of copper every day by mining about 450,000 tons of ore and waste rock. The percentage of copper is low because the ore comes from what geologists call a porphyry ore body. This means that millions of years ago, molten rock and superheated water forced their way into the existing rock. The water carried dissolved metals from deep in the earth, like gold, silver, and especially copper. As the molten magma and metal-laden fluid worked their way upward, they cooled. The magma became rock, and the metals were deposited in very small quantities in the rock. Now, 38 million years later, Kennecott mines and processes that ore deposit using one of the safest and most efficient systems in the world. Here's how this modern process works. First, workers drill a series of holes in the mine and take core samples from hundreds of feet in the ground. Geologists look at these drill cores and determine the type and quality of the ore. Mining engineers use this information to create a computer-generated model of the ore deposit that shows the grade and location of the ore and the waste rock. Blasting then begins on the bench area, where large holes are drilled in a pattern. Each hole is 55 feet deep and filled with about a thousand pounds of explosives.
the blast loosens about 180,000 tons of rock, which is then scooped up by a gigantic electric or hydraulic shovel. The largest shovels are six stories high and can lift the equivalent weight of 40 pickup trucks in a single pass, about 98 tons. The rock is then loaded into massive haul trucks. The largest trucks can carry 250 to 320 tons. They're roughly the size of a house. This equipment moves about 450,000 tons of ore and waste rock every day, or 160 million tons per year. A traffic controller uses a computer to monitor the entire operation coordinating the movements of every shovel and haul truck, including water trucks for dust control. Most of the copper-bearing ore is then delivered to the huge gyratory crusher in the pit, which breaks the ore into pieces less than 10 inches across. The crushed ore is transported five miles on a series of conveyor belts, including one through a three-mile tunnel and is deposited in a protected stockpile at the Copperton Concentrator. At this point, the ore contains less than 1% copper. All right, Rich, thank you. In the concentrator, steel balls rolling in these massive bills grind the ore until it is a fine powder. This ground ore is then mixed with water, reagents, and air, which cause the copper, along with gold, silver, molybdenum, and other minerals, to stick to these air bubbles in the flotation cells. When the bubbles float off the top, they are collected, and that liquid is called concentrate, which is now 28% copper. 